It's Tuesday and that means it's No Filter Tuesday. So welcome everyone. So today's guest, I am really, really excited about. I mean, I love to know about medical research and all good things of wellness. If anyone knows me, they know that I wanna know all about wellness and they also know that about me that I love having the cell phone numbers to doctors. The office is not enough. So today I'm speaking with Dr. Seema Yasmin, who is a doctor based at Stanford University. She's a director of research and education. And this year has helped debunk a lot of myths about the coronavirus. And we've seen her a lot on our screens throughout this whole entire pandemic. So my YouTube channel is a little bit over a year old. And some of my most watched videos seems to be about taking care of yourself. You see me on the plane, you see me take my vitamins. So I thought it was only fitting that I really get to have a great conversation with Dr. Seema Yasmin and find out maybe some things that, and other tips that we can all be doing during this really serious time of COVID. Today, I'm gonna to ask Dr. Seema some questions. We're gonna look at some videos and we're gonna hear what Dr. Seema Yasmin has to say about them. And then, we're gonna discuss the things we should be doing that we may not be doing. Just things to keep us healthy in mind, body and spirit because that's what it really is right now. Keeping ourselves really in the center of our core, keeping calm, keeping balance and not letting our mind wander into places that it shouldn't because the mind is a very powerful tool. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my special guest of today, Dr. Seema Yasmin. Hi, Naomi. How are you? Hi, Dr. Seema Yasmin. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much. Oh, of course. Thank you for having me. It's great to talk with you about this. I think there are so many questions that you have that millions of other people are asking and Googling every day. Well, that's the thing. We are running to Google every day, but I mean, things are changing every second. So, yeah. and there's so many different types of information. What we cannot it's a lot of noise as well and so many things people cannot afford every single thing so what are the basic things that we should be taking to take care of yeah. ourselves yeah so i think one of the key things to come back to and this will keep coming back to it throughout this conversation is first and foremost while this pandemic is raging, especially if you're in America, make sure that you are wearing your mask, you're doing physical distancing, good hand hygiene, especially now when we're heading into holidays, thinking about Christmas and New Year's, and we're just craving our friends and hugs and that human contact. It's so important that we keep iterating that physical distancing has to continue because transmission is at record high rates in America. If you were being dil diligent and careful back in February, March, and April, when we saw those spikes in New York, actually things are worse yeah. now. Yeah. I would like to depict some of the things you've just said and go into those things. Let's talk about the mask. Because the mask, there's, in the beginning there was the mask, that we first saw the N95 that didn't have the little filters. Then we yeah. were told that the ones with the filters were not good. So which is the right mask to wear? The best mask, hands down, that is mostly accessible now is your N95 mask without any valves. On no, it. so they call valves, so no valves. That's what I hear. Yeah, no valves. No valves. It's what you see when you're watching TV and you see the doctors and nurses who are in hospitals. I mean, it's atrocious. They're having to reuse them. They should be disposable, right? So that's a whole nother topic. But N95s are the ones that for most people, they give you a nice tight seal over your nose and around your mouth and chin. That does um, filter out 95% of particles. So it's really important to try and wear that kind of mask. If you can't get that, wear a surgical mask. That's what I've been wearing mostly when I have to go grocery store or shopping or something like that and a, a regular surgical mask but the surgical but mask slightly opens out on the sides and i am paranoid i know i'm not paranoid about anything but hygiene and yeah i am i don't like that it's opened on the sides i i prefer sure. that it lies 
on your skin closed, mm -hmm. sealed. That around yeah. here is sealed. There is no air getting in. That's what I, I like. Yeah. yeah, and so that the N95 should do that for you. It should make that nice fit. Mm -hmm. The surgical mask, sure, you can see when you're looking at somebody wearing it, right? It doesn't fit in that same way, but the studies still show, Naomi, that it's really effective. And so I don't want people thinking, oh, but I can't get right, an N95, right. I just don't wear anything. Wear a surgical mask if you haven't got an N95. Okay, now I just jumped right in, but I need to talk, I want to talk about you so everyone can know <laughs> who you are. Sure. So before we get started, please, can you tell us, we already started, but <laughs> like you say here on No Filter, we're going to go to the beginning. Can you please tell us, Seema, because I hear your British accent. Yeah. And I am British too, but I've got a bit of a mid-Atlantic mid twang, so I'm told, and that's just the way it is. Um, but when I'm home, it comes back. But please, can you tell me about yourself and how you ended up in uh, uh, San Francisco, at Stanford, and just all about you? Yeah, so I'm a Londoner. I grew up in Hackney in East London, um, and I don't come from a family that has any doctors or was very academic or anything, but I've always been fascinated by the human body, always wanted people to have access to that information about their health and what can keep them really healthy. So being very ambitious, I was like, I'm going to go to medical school, and I know I'm from Hackney, and I don't have any friends that have done this, but I'm going to go to Cambridge. So I had my eyes set on that. That's where I went to medical school after my time there I was like I need to get out of this elite bubble so then I went back to Hackney and worked as a doctor at Homerton Hospital mm -hmm. loved it but got really interested in epidemics so 10 years ago I moved from Hackney and I moved to America to serve as an officer in the epidemic intelligence service working for the U.S. government mm -hmm. that's the job that Kate, Kate Winslet's character does in the movie Contagion okay if you've seen that I, yes I was going from one outbreak I think to another everybody has watched contagion yeah. during this pandemic. I don't know one person that hasn't. May I yeah, ask you, I that, what was it yeah. like? Because what is what was your background growing up? What was, you have brothers, sisters, what's your family, what's your origin? So my family moved from India to the UK in the 60s. They were economic migrants, wanted to have a better job and better future for their kids. Mm -hmm. So we were the first generation born there, me and my cousins. I don't have any siblings, but really big and really tight knit family. You're your only child. I'm an only child. My mom had an arranged marriage. She had Angel. me when she was very, very young, mm -hmm. got out of the marriage and then didn't have any more children. My family are very religious um, and but quite conservative and orthodox. So I'm a little bit of an outlier living here in the Bay Area. I don't wear hijab like a lot of my family do, mm -hmm. but we're still super tight. May I and ask you, what was that like going to Cambridge, yeah. coming from an only child from an mm -hmm. Indian family? What was that like? It was, were competitive? It was it was really alienating, Naomi, because I am very ambitious, but then I was in this whole environment with people who'd gone to private school, literally, you know, Etonians or gone to Westminster, and I'd gone to like your local comprehensive school. So I felt very much like the odd one out, but I did. Because why? Was there a sense of elitism there? Totally, massively. People there, their fathers, are the Queen's Council, like literally. And they know that they are destined for great things, whether it's serving on a cabinet, becoming prime minister. And so you start thinking, what am I doing here? Why did I even have the audacity to apply? I don't belong. For my first year, I would go back to Hackney every weekend because I just was like, this is not the real world. I don't belong. I couldn't handle it. But you stuck it out. I did, because I was determined. I'm like, I'm going to get this education, the best in the world, and I'm going to take it back to Good East London. You. I'm going to go Good back for you. to London. And so, look yeah. where you are now. Grateful for you, Seema. Grateful oh, for you. Grateful for you. Thank you. So do you want to start by looking at some of the videos and telling us love it. your commentary on them? Are we going to roll video and take a look? I love traveling. I was born traveling. <laughs> That's what my mother says, which is true, it's pretty much. I love being in the air. I love being everywhere, but yet nowhere at the same time. Hydrated, I like the bottle. Oh, really? She has great legs. 
great life. Great health. Of course, I check out people's legs. I check out everything. Well, women are always checking out legs. Listen, great models are spotted in the airport. And we're off. Everything for hydration. When I get on a fine duck team, it's very important to keep your skin hydrated inside and out when traveling. Totally. Easy to forget. Important to carry a bottle of water with you. I mean, even though you're not allowed to go through with water anyway, you're just drinking a bottle, just getting as much hydration as you can before you get on that plane. Yeah. You can have an empty bottle with you and then refill exactly. it after you've gone through. Exactly, yeah. Hand, All right, so now you've got your gloves on and you're going at it with the disinfectant wipes. So you were a bit of a trendsetter here because you were doing this a decade because it, before it was in vogue. And so, yeah, this is important, I think, because of how much traffic these planes get. We don't know how much cleaning they get. Well, excuse and me, Seema, they say that they clean the planes. But in the fast turnarounds that they do, I do not believe that they deep clean all the planes the way we want to think that deep clean means. And so, yeah, I just, I just don't trust it. And I want to emphasize that it's not just the new coronavirus, right? During cold and flu season, there are other viruses circulating too, especially now, that can survive for maybe short amounts of time on those surfaces. And then you've got your mask on as well. So that's not an N95, that's like a cloth mask. That's an antibacterial like mask that I have, I still have. Um, it's an antibacterial mask that I would wear. I would throw them away. Um, you could say, are we washable? But I would throw them away after like wearing them too thick, too bad thick. Okay. And I felt that I needed to put something on the feet because I just feel like I don't want to touch anything. I don't want right. to anything. I don't want my hair. I don't want my, I don't want to touch anything. I felt like it's more comfortable to put something where I can even have a peace of mind. All that you see yeah. for me doing that is really at the end of the day for my peace of mind because yeah. I travel so much. Yeah, but one thing to bear in mind is that COVID-19, the virus that causes it is much more commonly spread through the air. So the majority of people who are getting infected we're getting infected because we're breathing in those infectious droplets from somebody who's talking or laughing or singing or something like that near us. We think there's a lot less transmission happening from surfaces. Not to say it's impossible or that it can't happen, but really the biggest driver of this pandemic is those droplets. So being in a closed environment is not good, especially if you don't have windows or anything. Absolutely. But the thing about planes is I think a lot of us grew up thinking that air is recycled and it's really bad on planes. No. It's mixed with fresh air and it goes through a HEPA filter, which is the same kind of filter we use in hospitals and in operating rooms. So that doesn't mean that outbreaks won't happen. We've had flu outbreaks linked to planes. We've had measles outbreaks. So you're saying the plane, sorry, so I got it wrong. So you're saying the plane air is good. It's, it's not good how well it's filtered and then no, we're getting constant new air coming into the planes yeah so there's basically there is recycled air but it's filtered and it's mixed with fresh air and so that's okay. why it's quite good the air it's similar to what you might even have in a hospital in an operating room um but it's still a good idea to wipe down those common surfaces because so many other germs bacteria viruses can live on them I mean, if I can help it, I try not to go to the bathroom on planes. I have to re, I mean, it's, I try not to. It depends on I how it, I make it mind over matter. But mm -hmm. tell me, what are the three things that people need to know and need to do to protect themselves during this pandemic? Because I feel like, you know, also, can it go into the clothes? Can it go into the hair? Right. So the studies have found that the coronavirus, the new one, doesn't survive that long on surfaces. When it does survive for a few days, then it survives longer at cool temperatures and on harder surfaces. So it deteriorates- And cool, and cool temperatures? at cool temperatures and on hard surfaces. So if there's something like cardboard or cotton, the amount of virus very rapidly decreases. And that's why we're seeing that most people are getting infected. It's not from touching something and then touching their face. It's much more likely they're getting it from breathing in those infectious okay. droplets. So that's why wearing the mask is important. That's why physical distancing is so important. That's mm -hmm. why obviously gatherings during the holidays is important. And of course, try not to travel if, unless you really have to. Now, I have this thing, like, 
when anyone that well not anyone I'm really before COVID yeah. also I don't let many people into my home mm -hmm. but I've also grew up with this thing where I don't like I guess I learned this also and the, the mask thing for me just so you know I learned from the Japanese culture from going to Japan in the 90s I love that about the Japanese that they just would wear this mask I thought it made sense Mm -hmm. They used to give them out to you. I think they may still do on Japan Airlines. That's when it started for me. And the when you come into a home, a lot of a lot of cultures have it. Take off your shoes. Yes. Because your shoes brings in some cultures it brings in outside negativity, however they may see it. I just look at it as it's bringing in germs and I don't want that in my home. I want to walk of my home barefoot knowing that no outside shoes or germs have stepped on the floor. Yeah. So I have a routine when I get into my home now, I take off the shoes outside, they get sprayed down. Anything that's coming from outside, groceries, I spray them down, I bring them in, then I put them away. Um, I keep the toilet seat closed. I keep a disinfectant in the toilet at all times. So you flush it and it's constantly, every time you flush, it gets disinfected. One of those blue things you put in. Um, I never sit on a toilet seat that I don't know. Never yeah. have and never will. Yeah. Um, now I have also this wonderful thing I found from Dettol that you, everyone knows I like Dettol, that you, um, when you come in, it's you can spray your clothes like a very nice smell different you can get lemon lime pomegranate like it just refreshes the clothes you know i mean you know i don't want someone coming in from an uber god knows he's been in the uber and sitting on my couch oh no yeah so oh, you know no, what no. Naomi? every everyone who knows me knows i'm a germaphobe and of course i come from a culture and a religion where you take your shoes off outside you never bring your shoes into the house um i wouldn't sit on a toilet seat that's not in my home stuff like that mm -hmm. but at the same time as a doctor i have to be careful because i have to speak with what we have evidence for so toilets right. for example you're probably not going to get the coronavirus from a toilet seat it's exactly the kind of surface but not even that just the toilet well. period yeah. oh, because yeah, yeah. they're saying that every country saying when they to these tests in the sewage it's for the coronavirus oh, yeah. but but that doesn't necessarily mean the virus they're finding in the sewage is still infectious it's like finding it's fragments of it fragments of it okay so i just prefer for me in my spiritual way of my things that i love to do yeah. toilet seats are down i think they're not good to be open oh, yeah. and i i mean god bless dyson has been so good to me this pandemic i have air filters everywhere and I just feel it's just nice to just keep a you know circulation yeah. of breeze and to clean the air. Yeah. Um, I do worry about that, you know, that going into the holidays and it's colder, it's harder yeah. for people to do things outdoors. And that's why we're seeing more outbreaks now and higher case counts. Because right. people are like, I'm fed up of this, get a negative test and just come over. And so then you have folks like congregated in a home with the windows and doors closed, which is exactly the way that you keep spreading. So tell me, the virus, I'm very, I'm very um, confused by this. In the beginning, we heard that the virus would not survive during the warmer months, the yeah. warm climate, which is not true. Obviously mm -hmm. now we know sitting here in, in December because basically it got, you know, the, the other countries in the world, the Middle East and, in exactly. the, and it got it got worse in that time exactly. and i remember president trump was saying this in march he was like oh in april it will miraculously go away because of the warmer weather and at the same time i was like wait singapore's got transmission it's warm and humid and there. singapore's and a very there. pleasant climate all year right. long right it was like 82 degrees fahrenheit there at the time so that clearly that's not the case the biggest issue here is human behavior us congregating us having covid fatigue because we are like beyond and up. tell me what is it seema that why this is it's based down to discipline isn't it we yeah, have it is, to be more disciplined it is discipline it's also a government response and the uk and us governments have completely messed this up and made it harder for people but now it really rests on us to be like nope i'm not gonna because we're seeing other countries in the world who are really getting a handle on this like new zealand yeah, and have had a handle on it new zealand i remember looking at pictures there from like may of farmers markets opening up and people like hugging their friends and i was like 
Oh, why don't I live in New Zealand? Like it was such a day. Well, I have friends yeah. that just went to New Zealand now and they put you straight into a hotel of their choice where you quarantine for two weeks. They're not messing around. They're not messing around, but that's what you need to do with a viral pandemic. You have to take it seriously. And so many countries haven't done that. In America, our death rate from COVID is 700 deaths per million people. But in Vietnam, it's 0.36 deaths per million people like what a massive difference and that comes down to discipline sure but it's the government response too now tell me africa has been pretty on a whole of 54 countries has done very well in handling this situation with yeah. so much less than we have in the west Generally, yeah. And we saw that with Ebola and Nigeria. Nigeria was on it, man, from the beginning. Nigeria could have had a terrible Ebola outbreak back in 2015, 2016, but they had a really good public health system. They took it seriously. We've seen the same thing now, but not just with the spread of virus. There have been African countries like Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Ghana, that have been really good at staying on top of all the misinformation and disinformation that spreads as well. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a look at food shopping. <laughs> what do we put in our bodies, Dr. Seema? What do we put in our bodies to keep ourselves Okay, that said insulin. That can't really have insulin in that tub, could it? No, it's what it is, is artichoke. Oh. It's artichoke powder. And I just put the last part of what it says, but it's comes from an artichoke. And so you're open with me, like disagreeing with you, which I really like. Oh, yes. I'm very, I'm, if what you see is what you get. <laughs> I always encourage people to try and get as much of their nutrition as they can from food, because the way that it's packaged in fruits and veggies is much better than when it's in an isolated vitamin. Right, pack. of course. I mean, what I try to do is, Again, I'm really putting myself on this regime right now of no sugar after yeah. five o'clock, five or six o'clock. No gluten, which I shouldn't have anyway, but sometimes you've got to spoil yourself a little bit during this pandemic. You know, you know, this is one of little gluten, okay, have it. I am gluten intolerant, which I think most people are. So I do have a little bit, but again, it has to be between the hours of like two and four and that's it, not afterwards. Are you doing intermittent fasting? Like are you eating in the evening? I don't it? actually do intermittent fasting. A few people have asked me that. I just really have found that once I do my shake in the mornings, it really does, it gets me through. I might want to have a banana or an apple or I love pomegranate, which pomegranate is a really amazing fruit. It's such a good heel liver for fruit. And I tend to, I don't want, that, that gets me through enough to dinner time. Yeah. I'm not the thing that's right, but that seems to be how I am. I really only eat one meal a day, but I look at the shaker's yeah. meal. Yeah, and it can be because you're packing it full of so much fiber and um, nutrition. And the good thing about fruit is it is sugary, right? But it's packaged often with so much fiber in it that at least it slows down the release. Now, of elderberry, sugar. elderberry, Elderberry is something that's very good for the immune. Um, wh what do you think of elderberries? It's, of course, we've been told to take lots of vitamin D, lots of zinc. Um, yeah. So with elderberry, it's one of those nutrients or supplements like so many others that there's not a lot of evidence to support them. So Same why do people we... feel this way so strongly? Because, I mean, there are some studies that show that it can help and some of the other supplements can help, but they're not the most robust study. So as a doctor, you wouldn't want me to prescribe something or recommend something yeah. unless there was evidence really showing it. Yeah. I think supplements, people really let it slide because they're like, oh, it probably can't do any harm. Makes me feel good. That placebo effect is real. Mm -hmm. So let me take it. But you know what? Too much of a good thing can be bad for you too. Because if you're taking too much vitamin C, for example, more than two. Yeah, I feel food, like, I feel like with me, how I do my vitamins is yeah. the vitamin C's every day. I take it in a liquid kind of. How as, much do you take? Thousand milligrams. Okay, because anything more than 2,000. No, I take 1,000 a day. But when I, like all the vitamins you see me take here, I take them 
I balance them. I take one set this day. I take my vitamin D pill once a week because I take a vitamin D of 50,000. So I take okay. it once a week. And um, did you have your vitamin D levels um, tested by a doctor? I have had my vitamin D levels tested, yes. And I've okay. gone many times over in the um, few years ago, they were too high. So okay. I want to keep it at a balance. So, I mean, because I'm taking yeah. 50,000 in one capsule, I take that once a day. Okay. Um, and I, vitamin D intoxication is rare, but it can cause fatigue and memory loss and stomach aches and nausea and vomiting. And with vitamin C, if you're taking too much, it can actually increase your risk of developing kidney stones. So that's mm -hmm. why I want people to know that it's not like, oh, these vitamins and nutrients are so good. I could just have a lot. So of what them. do you want to say to people? Should people take vitamins when they feel that they need a little pick me up? But I feel like in this time, we really want to make sure that our immune's ready to fight yeah. if we get the virus. So you know what can happen a lot is that people have a crappy diet and then they're like, oh, but I take vitamins. You yeah. don't want to do that. Never right? take on an empty stomach either. No, that'll make you feel quite queasy. In fact, I mean, like the best thing to do is to be getting all your nutrition through your diet because of the way that the vitamins are packaged within fruits and vegetables and things like fish. Um, it's much more it's better for your body in terms of how it's absorbed. For example, vitamin D and calcium often come together and that's good because vitamin D actually helps your body absorb that calcium. Mm -hmm. If you're taking it on its own in a pill, you're not getting that same effect. Now I love spinach. I love celery. I love most green um, nutrients and things that you can take. Sometimes in, when I, I have a pill that's like made up of all of those things when I cannot get when I'm out on location somewhere in the middle of nowhere and I cannot get to take yeah. that or yeah. I'm not, or I realize, oh my God, a week, a four days has gone by. I didn't really do much on my veggies this week. So I'll, I'll, I'll take an extra couple capsules of this, of my yeah. vegetable peel that will um, give me that same balance as if I had eaten vegetables for the week. And, and that's fine. It's just that they can be really expensive as well, right? Some of these supplements and vitamins. They can. I mean, supplements are. And I mean, I'm traveling yeah. with a whole, now if I want to move, it's going to be a disaster because it's a whole two extra bags just to- Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> and it's a whole other bag just to make sure I've got my mask, my hazmat, my goggles, my gloves. I still yeah. feel very strongly about the touch thing. And so the, yeah. I feel safe. I, I will wear gloves until I feel when it's okay. Yeah. Not to. You know, and, and that's fine. But you know what? Don't do that thing that some people do, which is they kind of fall into a false sense of security because they're wearing the gloves. Oh, no, no, no. I take them off. I have about 10 oh. in my pocket. I'm changing them constantly. If I touch something, new one. Da -da 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 -da, a new one. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you know touch your phone and then you. No, I'm not some people will like wear gloves and then they'll touch a surface and then they'll go and touch your, their face. They think that's okay, I didn't touch. No, 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 you have to change them. You have to change them immediately. You touch something, you open the public door of a, of a, of a building that you have to go into, of a public place, you have to change them immediately. Don't use yeah. it to go into, no. Um, yeah. You know what, back in the day, I used to work in a laboratory studying coronaviruses. This was back in 2002 when we had that first SARS outbreak. And there were some things in the lab where we had to take one glove off and leave one on because it made you so alert to what you touched. Because you were like, this is my bare hand. Because you really can fall into that sense of reassurance when you've got gloves on. And just totally just forget that and, you think, yeah. yeah. What was I going to say to you? Oregano oil. Again, limited evidence that it does anything. And in fact, recently in the last few months, the FDA here in America has kind of been like slapping the wrist of some manufacturers because they've been selling essential oils and supplements saying this will prevent, treat, or cure COVID. At the moment, whether it's oregano oil or any of those essential oils, none have been proven. No, there's no, listen, that's, that's you, know, you just, for me, it's all just, I take these simply, uh -huh. Listen, everyone, I hope you're hearing this. I'm not, there, none of these things we're talking about is curing COVID. Yes, but what yeah. it can do is strengthen your immune. So if you do get the virus, you're able to cope with it and get through it and hopefully but not. That, that's not. That's not proven. And what's happening is people are basically scamming the public. And, so, and that's why they're getting in trouble with the FDA. Because instead of saying, take this, it might make you feel good, might make you feel like you're doing something to improve your health. They're really making those claims mm -hmm. that this will prevent you getting COVID. And that's, that's, that's. What false. about, I take also black seed oil. 
Mm -hmm. And a lot of my family swear by that. Again, take it if you like it. Don't overdo it. No, it doesn't taste very nice, but it's 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 something. I'm basically taking what I was taking before, what I've been taking all these years of travel. I've upped it with added a few extra things. And that's really it. Echinacea, I've always taken. Golden seal, I've always taken. I I think that's fine. You know the problem? It's not what you're doing. It's what people out there might do, which is, oh, I'm taking loads of supplements. My immune system's great. I'm not going to wear a mask now. Oh, no. Not this that we're talking about can make you feel that you're strong enough to not wear a mask. Understand, this virus, as you have seen, does not discriminate. No. I mean, I was so shocked to read last week that a young girl in Michigan of 14 years old passed away yeah. from coronavirus. I mean, 14. And I think there may have been even someone younger than that in the UK, I'm not sure. Yeah, and in Texas too, I think. And there's been there's been kids that have died. And the interesting thing we're seeing about kids and some adults too, is it looks like they're getting really sick because their immune system is actually overreacting. And the immune system is out of control, trying to fight the virus, but then does so much collateral damage and then can cause death. So we're still trying to understand the role of the immune system. With so the COVID. conclusion of the vitamins is keep your routine, but balance. Don't yeah. start overtaking it because of what we're going through. Just keep to what you take in your routine exactly. and, your, and keep it balanced. Exactly. Everything within moderation. Too much of a good thing can be bad. Try and get your nutrition, your vitamins through your food. Okay. So here now, most important foods to eat, Dr. Seema. I think fresh fruits and veggies, oily fish a few times a week if you're not vegan or vegetarian. And And what if you're allergic to, I'm allergic to iodine. A lot of fishes carry iodine. I can't eat those fishes. Some fish do, and some are lower in fish, but you can still actually get those essential fatty acids from things like nuts, from avocados. So you can do a vegan version of that as well, but just try and have a lot of color, a lot of texture on your plate. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with the leafy greens and not too much. I feel like a lot of people have become vegan in this pandemic. My my friends have, yeah, they have. They're really trying to just be, um, trying to reduce inflammation in the body. There is some evidence around making sure you've got plant-based sources of protein in your diet. I am not vegan. I wish I had the kind of mental strength to do that, but I have tried to do like one vegan day a week. That's my way of like Mm -hmm. baby step. I try to do one day of just fasting. Um, I just, you know, I like to just do my juice and that's it. And I'm the kind of person I eat when I'm hungry. Okay. You know what I worry about with juices is because they've got a lot of sugar in them because all the fiber was taken out. So juices taste nice, but I prefer when people eat their fruit. So eating's better. Well, yeah, because you're getting the fiber and that slows down the sugar release in your body. Okay. How about, I love turmeric. Me too. I'm Indian. We put I'm in all ginger our tea. I mean, turmeric and ginger tea. I oh, have yeah. turmeric tea. I put turmeric on my food. I put turmeric in my juices. It's yeah. also good for inflammation. It's so good for so many things. I mean, it tastes amazing. And a turmeric latte is very satisfying right now. Oh, I like and the sound of that. Like oat milk or almond milk. Yeah, it tastes yeah. really good. And a bit of grated ginger in there as well. It's like a very warming winter drink. That's, I'm going to try that. Turmeric, almond milk, because I don't drink milk. So almond milk, turmeric. Oh, I, I like it in oat milk as well. Like you heat oat. it up, you froth the oat milk, and you. I love grated fresh turmeric, although it will stain your nails and your fingers. Okay, will be ginger, turmeric, oat milk, and what else did you say? Well, I like to add a little bit of cardamom. Oh, yeah, I've got cardamom. And then it's just, it feels very warming and it's good in the winter. Again, I have to be honest, there's like limited evidence about the role of turmeric in boosting the immune system or reducing inflammation. There's some studies done. Um, But but I I feel like the nation, okay, let's look at the Indian. Let's look at the India as a country. India has done, has been, it's high with cases, Uh, but it's the death, is the death, the death rate is not as high as not as high as America, but that's because America is so bad. Um, India, unfortunately, has had a really bad epidemic. My auntie in India died from COVID-19. Oh, I'm so ago. sorry. Yeah, so it's My condolences. 
so heartbreaking. So many of these countries have failed their citizens and I think people are just struggling. I mean, is that because of lack of medical care? Partly, yeah. And I don't think yeah. it's one thing, it's a bunch of things. Lack yeah, of care. because I, I did something in India, many in Bombay actually, I love India. I really love it there. And um, a lot of people, it was during the bombings of the Taj Mahal and Oberoi. Oh my gosh. And I did, I uh, raised a, I did a fundraiser there where a lot of ambulances couldn't get to the people because they couldn't get, they were too wide. So yeah. and this thing- can be really expensive there, same as in the US. And so the yeah. people of cholera, yeah. they don't get the care that they deserve. So we did, we, we raised money to get, you know, be able to manufacture and make these smaller ambulances so they could get up to the people oh, because wow. it was crazy to lose lives because they couldn't yeah. get there. Yeah, exactly. So now I want to go to the vaccine. Yeah. Dr. Seema, we're hearing that it's good. There's a few kinds out there. There's Moderna, there's Pfizer, there's Sputnik V in Russia, China has their vaccine. When do we know, when do we, I mean, what, I mean, how do we, I mean, my decision's made up, I want the vaccine. I just mm -hmm. wanna see a little bit, I don't know in how much time I wanna wait to see how, yes. it, how it is for others, if there's any side effects, but I know that I wanna travel I want to see my loved ones. I want to be with my loved ones. I want to take the vaccine. Yeah, totally. I, I get asked this question all the time. So with those three main ones, the Pfizer one, the Moderna one, and the University of Oxford vaccine. University of Oxford, all, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. They've gone through the phase three trials, and now what some of them are doing is applying for emergency use authorization. So that's not like a full approval. It's like saying, hey, we've got two months of safety data. Here's all that we have so far. Is this good enough in an emergency situation where thousands are dying every day to start rolling it out? You know your question about any side effects. Historically, and I've been looking at data from other vaccines, we normally see those severe side effects within the first six weeks. So these trials, even if you want them to be a lot longer, they already are giving us some good data about there's not many or if any severe side effects so far associated with these main vaccines. Of course, when you're doing a study in about 40,000 people and then you give it to 400 million people, you may start seeing some things, but it's likely going to be quite rare given the good uh, signs we're seeing from the trials. Mm -hmm. Now, this year for me, I did the pneumonia shot, which I've never done before. Okay. But I've had so many of my friends who have had COVID mm -hmm. oh, no. suffer from pneumonia after for months and months and months that never had okay. pneumonia before. And, yeah. I, you know, you know, in London, we get the um, rubella and, you know, yeah. but I mean, I was just like, I never did it, but I thought to myself, I want to take the pneumonia. So I did the pneumonia. It comes in two parts. You do one and then two months later, you follow up on the second one. And I felt like this time I want to do it because just about hearing of if you get the virus, that yeah. this pneumonia has just come in and just seems to set there. I mean, one of my friends had pneumonia for nine months. Oh my gosh. Really ill. Wow. So I just felt like, you know, I wasn't even aware of this vaccine before. I never really heard about it wow. too much. Um, oh, it's been a while. Well, I hadn't heard about it so much in America, but they seem to be very much big on it in Europe. Okay. And the thing now is that basically, yes, we have a pandemic, but we want people to get their flu shot. We want people to be up to date on all their shots because we need to protect the healthcare systems, right? Hospitals are getting overwhelmed with COVID-19. Imagine if there's like a ton of flu, this flu season as well, it's going to be too much. And we're going to be telling people, sorry, we know you need a hospital bed, but we don't have any space. Like that's already happening in parts of Texas and Missouri, right? That's a problem. So this year, if you're ever sitting on the fence, you're watching this like oh I don't know about the flu shot this is the year you get the flu shot because this is the year you do not want to get flu I had patients at Homerton Hospital that died from flu young sometimes pregnant it would kill them quickly man flu is no joke and you do not want it this year oh and I will say that you know these viruses like flu and the one that causes COVID-19 they can cause the chest infection and pneumonia themselves uh -huh. but 
they can also leave you wide open to a secondary infection. So with the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, now we're learning that 50 million people died, but not all of them directly from the flu. They got the flu, but then they got another chest infection on top of it, and that's what killed them. Now, getting coronavirus once makes some people think, oh, I've had it, I'm fine, I don't have to wear the mask. It's uh -huh. not true. I know many people that have had it twice. Yep. We're learning more and more about people that get it twice. And in some cases, they get it worse the second time around. Listen, we still don't understand exactly how long the antibodies last for, how much of them you need, why some people get them, some people don't get as much. You cannot be complacent right now in the middle of a global pandemic. Even if you've had COVID-19, please wear your mask and take this seriously. Even if you get COVID a second time, but you don't get sick, you could be an asymptomatic person who spreads the virus to others. So wear your mask. But I, I know people that have had it that now are like, I'm going to travel. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Do not let your guard down. So <sighs> there you go. So you, do you, advise people to take the vaccine? I, once it's approved and it's gone through those safety protocols where the governments are saying, and scientists more importantly are saying, we have enough data to give this emergency use okay. authorization. Yes, get vaccinated when it's available. There may not be enough for everyone at the beginning when I have to prioritize healthcare workers, older folks, but when it is available to everyone, we're gonna need everyone to get it. Otherwise we won't reach herd immunity. One of the questions I had for you is sleep. Yeah, so sleep. important. I know, but Dr. Dr. Yasmin, it's, I mean, even with working out and it's, is it because we just, what we the energies we're feeling in the world right now that yeah. so many people cannot so many. sleep yeah and i don't blame anyone right we're living through a pandemic we're li living through recession we're living through more police brutality and racist violence like how do you shut your eyes at night and just fall asleep so accept that this is a challenge and the divide so then but yeah. as you know sleep is the best best medicine we can have for ourselves correct it's so it's good for blood pressure it's good for your immune system it's good for your so heart then rate without your it system. without it with the lack of with all the good things we can be doing for ourselves without that sleep yeah no that's a great point sleep is so fundamental make sure you're getting your eight hours of good quality sleep a day a night rather get a nap in during the day if you can it just lets your body heal and really rest and also dealing with grief yeah grief and you've been you've lost a family member grief is so hard it's like yeah. every time i i sometimes mm -hmm. feel that i'm afraid to wake up because i don't want to lose someone else i don't want to hear <laughs> i lost someone else and yeah. it's not all covid related no it's but it's just been so exactly. much loss. And yeah. I just, I, I mean, I'm in, so I'm, I'm in sobriety and I get on my knees every day and I just pray, please, I've not, please, can there be a week that goes by where yeah. I can't, don't lose someone, not someone that I knew, just met them once, someone that I knew. And it's just, even today, before coming on to talk to you, I lost someone. And it's oh like gosh. the grief, you don't have time to, to, to breathe because then another person, how I'm do you sorry. deal with grief? I'm so sorry for your loss. You know, my friend Ty, a well-known musician in London, he died a few months ago. My friend Gita Ramji, an amazing HIV um, scientist, she died in Durban in March. I just felt like I couldn't even recover from one death before I heard about somebody else. It felt nonstop. And now in America, with around a thousand deaths a day, how do you wrap your head around that, right? Um, I think we have to reach out to others. This is not the time to try and be strong and soldier through on your own. We're all going through this. Ask each other if you're okay reach out to folks and let them know, hey, is it okay to unburden on you a little bit? Because I'm feeling like crap I, right now. I think about, like you said earlier, the, 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 the thing of touching the sensory yeah. is so important. It and is. I feel, I, you know, to know that you have people in homes 
Yeah. Who, the most important thing is to touch and hug those people. They need to be touched. I know, we are social animals. We need that touch. Most of us need that. It's so hard to not have it at a time of mass bereavement. I think I'm in general with, with these nursing homes, in my culture, we don't put our culture, in my Same. family and my heritage, we don't put our people in nursing homes. Same. They They're with us, you know, my grandmother passed till the end at home. But yeah. it's that thing of that touch is so important, oh, even you. without the pandemic. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just in real and it, with the, and just you know what? life. I think this is why dog adoptions have gone up and some of the dog shelters have emptied out because people are like, okay, I can't gather with other people. Let me cuddle this dog instead. And thank goodness for dogs and cats and pets because that's been some help. But the thing is, we have to bear in mind that the longer or the, the more we sacrifice right now, the quicker we can get back. To we have to be people. patient, right? Yeah. And people are we not being paid, be paid. getting fed up. Right. TSA I understand. Just like, I, I feel for the I feel for the young teenagers. I feel for them. Too. I do. And you know, interaction with each other. And for it's, us. You know, kids. And for us too. And okay. for us too. But the, that generation is really important. And and even the older generation yeah. too. So it can make someone who's so like there and on it because they're a people person suddenly decline. Oh, massively. And, We've seen that with older adults. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, you just said something about adopting pets and people fostering pets or, you know, to have yeah. their, their own um, pets and yeah, they can um, give affection to. But what about what we heard about the minks in Denmark yeah. going yeah. from minks to humans? Yeah. Can that happen with our animals? So it's been documented with a few animals, but so far no documented transmission of COVID-19 from domesticated dogs and cats to humans. They could still potentially act as a fomite, a word we use in public health to mean like a surface mm -hmm. that gets contaminated and then someone touches it, but we haven't really seen documented cases of that. Dr. Seema Yasmin, it's been a pleasure and an education and so grateful to you that you could be on No Filter today. And I hope you all got something out of this today. And I really feel like, what would you say the three words were? Moderation, balance. Moder yeah. Moderation, balance and compassion. Compassion for yourself, compassion for others. I know we can't hug each other and we want to so bad, but we can still reach out. We can still talk to our friends and unload a little we bit. We want to come through this. Yeah, we're all going to have our own experience of what yeah. we went through with this and of learning, but we want to come through this better, more compassionate, more yeah. sharing, more loving, more yeah, appreciating, more we gratitude. We have to, because Thankful. this is such a dark spot in history. We just have to show a lot of love, a lot of empathy and care for ourselves and for each and other. And be ready to embrace what yeah. we are about to receive. Yes, get your flu shot. In a positive shot. way. Yeah, and get your flu shot this year. Keep wearing a mask, physical distancing, say no thank you to the holiday parties and we'll get through it if we do all of that. Amen. Thank you so much. So grateful to you, Yasmin, and, and, and Dr. Yasmin, and also to say thank you for what you do, because without you all putting yourselves out there for us to keep us informed, we wouldn't know. So thank, thank you, you so, so, so much. Thank you. Well, it's my honor. Thank you so much. And I have to say really quickly that as a little brown girl growing up in the 90s in London, you were a game changer for me and my friends. My friends were West Indian and Nigerian and Ugandan. And I don't know if you will ever understand like the impact you had on the way that we saw ourselves and each other because of the, the barriers that you smashed through. I don't think that can be overstated ever. So thank you for all. You must have gone through so much crap. I can't even imagine. But thank you for doing it with so much grace. And Look, you, what you life. went through in Cambridge, and look at you, proud of you, sister. Gotta keep going, but thank you. Never give up. Thank oh, you. Never. 
Never yeah. ever. Thank you. Take care. Be safe. I will. Bye bye. Dr. Seema Yasmin, everyone. What an education I got today. I learned some new things, but most importantly, keep doing what you do. Think about everyone else around you. Think about your loved ones. Don't be selfish. Try to be disciplined, have patience. We're gonna get through this. I know it's easier said than done, but this, God doesn't give us what we cannot handle. We can handle this. We've got to, we have to adapt. I love you all and thank you so much for watching this special episode of No Filter. I really wanted to do this one. Until next week, Naomi Brown, girl. Ah!